We're good. Peace to the family. We are here for another installment, and we're going to talk to you about the geometry of the races, and we're also going to discuss heart consciousness versus brain consciousness. So heart consciousness versus brain consciousness. Before we get started, we want to get off our affirmation. This is also part of my homeschooling program, my homeschooling ritual. I hope you share this video right now. Share it with your friends, share it with your family. And what's a lesson done by Brother Polite without yet another helicopter? I don't know what's going on, family. This is constantly happening. I go to different locations. This seems to be a helicopter every single way I go. It's all right though. They need to learn too. So what we're gonna say is for you to share this video with your friends and with your family, particularly those on the live stream right now on Facebook, during the course of this share, it's a family show. I teach in such a way that this is for all the adults. I'll always have to keep going no matter what. I teach in such a way that this is for the adults and for the children simultaneously. And I'll be doing a bunch of free classes live if you're willing to bring your children in for these dynamic homeschooling lessons that's good for adults and youth. We're covering how to teach as parents, how to be patient, and just to give you an image of brothers educating their children. It exists, and I want to encourage brothers and sisters that's homeschooling or just have time to put to the side to educate their children. Let's give them our affirmation, baby. What's our affirmation? I am using my consciousness to manifest my goals. Let them know as well. I am using my consciousness to manifest my goals. There we go. She's using her consciousness to manifest her goals. Every lesson is engendered around that principle because I promised her I will never teach you anything that will not immediately contribute to your ability to use your consciousness to manifest your goals. That means we have to fortify her mind. That means we have to have exercises of the mind to strengthen her imagination. This means she also has to have a concept of energy and how to use it and where is it at. The planet Earth has a vast supply of free energy that is not being used because the elite want to sell us on the energy and resources or energy in the form of resources that are not infinite. The planet Earth has free energy. There's a grid here that never runs out of energy on planet Earth that we can immediately access, that we can generate or culminate through just coherent heart breathing. These are all facts. But how can we take the curriculum and incorporate these ideas through math, science, language, history, art? That's the task at hand. So as you watch different homeschool sessions, you'll say, man, he's covering geometry, he's covering biology, he's covering space physics, he's covering microbial biology, he's covering supersymmetry, he's covering string theory. You'll be like, all to a child. What does she know? She don't know when it's hard or when it's easy. She don't have a concept, she just learns. And that's how learning should be. But once you go in that school, then I start teaching, you say, ah, oh, this is too hard. But if you're not in that school and you get homeschooled by Brother Polite, you don't know how accelerated you are. You don't have a concept of hard or easy. I don't even have a grade system. And I know you're like, well, how will she know she's doing good? Because you'll see daddy's sign of approval when he smiles. That's the grade, that's the grade. <laughs> And we don't stop no lesson until I smile. I'm never gonna stop the lesson sad and pouting. We don't have a grade system. She don't have to go through her life hoping to be judged based on the way she's thinking. Then later on, people say something wrong with you looking to be validated by what you say through other people's approval. Later on, people say, you don't need your thoughts validated by other people. But through our whole school career, for 14 years, from pre-K to 12th grade, you're always looking for validation based on what you think and how you perform. You come out of school and everyone says you don't need to be validated by other people's opinions. Prior to that, you're being judged all throughout the week. And you can't wait to get back to school to see what someone thinks of your work. What do you think of your work is most important? That's what I teach my daughter. So I've got a very different philosophy. Very different philosophy. Went up to me, I wouldn't teach a child how to read until they're seven years old because the human brain doesn't fully develop into their seven and the part of the brain that's not fully developed is the language part, the Broca's area. 
So I'll have one more on texture, more on color, more on mood, emotions, and vibrations. Because why would you teach a child language when their brain didn't even fully develop the language part yet? But they want you to do that first. There's other things that we could attain to, ascertain to. So why I gotta teach her language because the world said teach her language and that part of her psyche isn't even developed yet. So she was able to speak four languages before she was able to write them. Because I understand what's going on and I know most of this consciousness comes from the heart and the heart gives the decree for what to do next. Those are all facts. All facts. I'm turned up. I'm excited because they need to know these things, baby. So. <clears throat> This is what we're gonna start off with. Again, we're gonna deal with the geometry of the races. We gotta talk about the races in a geometric sense. The geometry of the races. Even if, even if you look at your skin, you see a bunch of pyramids that make up your whole skin. There's a geometry to the heart. That's what we gotta deal with. So we're gonna talk about the geometry of the races and we're gonna talk about brain consciousness versus heart consciousness. A lot of you brain conscious out there and that's the problem. Some of you brain dead semi, but that's another issue. So what we're gonna do we're going to discuss what is this right here what's this word geometry okay geometry and show me the prefix Gia. what's that Gia. okay what does geo mean earth there you go geo means earth okay what does what's the suffix? Ometry. What does ometry mean? Measure. There you go. So what does geometry mean? To measure earth. There you go. Tell them. That's what does geometry mean? To measure earth. Okay, okay, okay. It's very important. You can understand almost any word on planet Earth when you master the prefixes and suffixes when you are youth. When you're in your youth, this is key. Prefix and suffix. We gotta just have a prefix suffix machine. Huh, bio, <laughs> allergy, geo, metric, chi, angle. Like you just gotta throw them. It's boxing. Get a get a boxing bag and throw out prefixes and suffixes and make a punch every time there's a prefix or suffix. Prefix, punch with the left. Suffix, punch with the right. Beat up this vocabulary. Don't get beat up by vocabulary. People try to use words to beat you up. We beat up words in my boot camp. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, he stop. But that's what we gotta do. Where, where's the eraser, baby? Okay, there you go. Thank you so much. Let's get that going. But for real, these are the nuances, right? To language. One of the vocabulary words. So what is this word? Biology. Okay, what's the prefix? Bio. What does bio mean? Life. Tell them what it means. Life. Okay, come back here. Come back here. <laughs> what is the suffix? Ology. What does ology mean? Study. Okay. What does biology mean? To study life. Let them know that. Say it proud. To study life. So we're going to be doing geometry and we're going to be doing biology. And what we know, everything's in patterns, even when we're done with language. So we know most times when there's a prefix and there's a suffix, we, we're going to probably use the last part of the prefix. And it's going to be, a, we're going to use the O over here and we're going to use the O over there. Just like geometry. We're going to use the O on one side for geo and we're going to use the O again for ology. That's a pattern. And then what we're going to do is put a subtle two over here because then we're going to read it from this side from right to left so when i ask what is this word we're going to say biology and we know that it's life study but we're going to read it in this direction and we're going to implement that too so we know to say to study life biology means to study life geometry means to measure earth and when we're measuring the earth we normally come up across shapes shapes have measures in the form of degrees and degrees that's there's the tricky part they don't tell you about the energy if it's 30 degrees Fahrenheit, they're telling you a measurement in energy. So when we're talking about geometry, we wind up talking about degrees, we're talking about energy. So if it's energy, it should be able to be accessible. So every shape has degrees, so every shape has an energy that we should be able to access to use for what? Healing. Like, are you saying we can use these shapes for healing? I'm telling you that by the time we're done and you follow what I have to share, I learned this from Lester Lovitz. That's a reference point for you. I learned how to create alternating current by cutting out shapes from construction paper and hanging it in my room. I know how to make your room freeze 
from just cutting out certain geometric shapes and placing them in the corners of the room. And I can create an alternating current and make your room freeze during a hot summer day from a 99 cent pack of construction paper. I've been on planet Earth long enough to be espoused to some of the greatest masters on planet Earth. One of my other teachers, Shatan Nityama, those of you that follow me, you know about not touching the female counterpart and taking her to heights in ecstasy without touching her. Body work is what it's called. Okay, this is just true stuff. This ain't about, this is a family show. It's just true. Without touching people, we bear witness. Everyone that comes to my classes that kept up with me throughout the years, y'all know what I'm talking about. You bear witness to the unseen world and the effects of energy. So just those two things alone that I'm talking about tells me that people are lost and they're being sold principles that already exist within themselves. <clears throat> These are all facts. So thank you for that. Erase that for me, baby. These are all facts, all facts. So when I teach my daughter about these energies and you can use these shapes for healing, use these shapes to commit things to memory, you can store information inside of shapes mentally. How you think I got the memory that I got? I'm the one that taught you about common customs, which is a calculus system that precipitates culture by process of differentiation and integration. We're able to find the value of smaller things and factorials of those equivalents, thus grant you the least adverse effects from the decisions that you make. The crazy part is, you think I'm committing the information to memory, I actually just read it off a piece of paper that I stored inside of a tetrahedron. See, I had to retire because I'm not teaching what I really want to teach. But when I'm with my daughter, I could go in. So I'm like, you know what? The only reason I was teaching the economics and everything was just so people could have the money, so they could have the free time, so we could do this information, so we could all travel out the country, like I took some of my students out the country, so we can get it in with the metaphysics. And by metaphysics, meta means beyond in physics, alludes to classical physics, because there was a point where science stopped at classical physics, and they, wasn't, they didn't yet understand quantum chromodynamics, they didn't yet understand supersymmetry, they didn't understand space physics, and so forth and so on. So anything that comes after classical physics was beyond the physics they understood. That's what metaphysics means. Metaphysics doesn't allude to information you don't understand. Metaphysics alludes to information that came after the classical physics when science stopped at a certain era. Beyond classical physics is what metaphysics means. So when we're talking about that which is metaphysical, you're still talking about physics, which caters to the nature of matter and the energy thereof. Energy. So this matter was precipitated by energy which was offset by consciousness. It's true. Idealism. It's real. Walk with me, family. We got a lot to teach. This is a homeschool situation here but I guarantee you my homeschool sessions will body slam adult lectures every day of the week and that's not an ego that's just to say if you can't teach to the youth while simultaneously teaching to the adults then what are we teaching in the first place that's what I'm saying because while the adults go to the lectures the children are at home what's going on with their minds the adults are doing everything to get knowledge on the white man, and he's out to kill us and attack us. Well, how are our children going to use this information? Can't use it to pay bills, can't use it to protect them. What happens when they rape this planet of several resources and only elite can have access to it? You guys are going to kill each other over a chicken drumstick. The first smell of a Popeye's biscuit, knowing they've been closed for two years, but someone still is harnessing one of the McDonald's burgers that don't disintegrate until 10,000 years. Y'all don't kill each other for that. That burger and fries that won't be destroyed or eliminated or decomposed. Mm. You're going to need this information. I'm not a doomsday guy, but yo, you should be prepared for every and all things. And if you knew what I knew, you would realize why I said I'm falling back. You guys are wild. <clears throat> Do me a favor. Draw me a horizontal line. <clears throat> These are very important words for children. Like, draw me a horizontal line. Great. Now, make that line perpendicular. There you go. These are important words. Words are a GPS. It's a navigational system. I need 
my child to know what to do when she hears a certain word. What kind of angle is this? Right angle. It's a right angle. Very good, baby. Let me write that down. It's a right angle. So a perpendicular angle is a right angle. How much degrees is in a right angle? 90 degrees. 90 degrees is in a right angle. When we talk degrees, we talking energy. So we about to find out how to access some energy. See, this ain't just regular math. This is sacred geometry. It's not regular math. If you was in class and you knew we was about to access some energy so I can heal someone from afar, I can heal myself, or I can commit things to memory larger than I would have been able to do prior, you'd have been in class like, yo, come on with the shapes. Come on, let's just get it in so I can start using this information. See, I'm not lying to my daughter. Once you say degree, we're talking about energy. This is not semantics. Once you say degree, you're talking about energy. How do I know? Because I can take 99 cents, buy me some construction paper, cut it, into, cut it into regular shapes that you know how to cut, and hang it in my house, and I will make that thing freeze on a 100 degree day. No air conditioning, because I can create an alternating current, and you got somebody in particular named Lester Lovins who taught how to do this. I don't know if he's still teaching how to do it, but that's where I learned it from. That's what started my path. I'm deep into sacred geometry. That's one example of what you could do with shapes and energy. So, we drew a, my baby girl drew a horizontal line. Then she drew a vertical line in such a way that this would become perpendicular. Therefore, it became a right angle. A right angle is made up of how much degrees? 90 degrees. There you go, 90 degrees. Now, if I turn around, like my man Jabriza said, it would be crazy, right? If I were to take this line, now let <laughs> Wind up in your back pocket. Like, let me stop. So, right angle. Boom. So now that I closed it, what kind of shape did I just create? A, tri a right triangle. A right triangle. Very good. Very good. Tell them what kind of triangle this is. A right triangle. Tell them what kind of triangle this is. A right triangle. Okay, we gotta make eye contact. The people here, we don't want them feeling like we don't think they're here. We out here to teach the people. We want you to motivate the young brothers and sisters because when we went to art class, which should have been math class, and when we went to math class, which should have been art class, we didn't really know why we was doing any of this, so nobody really cares about shapes. They don't realize everything here is made by way of a circle. I don't care if you see squares corners 90 degrees I don't care it's only made by way of a circle a bunch of circles this is real it's so real or spheres I should say if we want to get real technical and I know that don't even make sense for a lot of people so okay we had a right triangle and 90 degrees what are the other degrees on this right triangle 45, say it louder 45 45 so on a right triangle you have 90 degree angles and you have two other what angles? 45, 45. 45 degree angles, very good. And if we add 45 plus 45, what do we get? 90 degrees. And if we add 90 plus 90, what do we get? 180 degrees. So a triangle is made up of how much degrees? 180 degrees. I love this girl. Come here, give me a I love you so much. I love you so much. I love you, I love you so much. <laughs> She be going in. She be going in. Hold that, white man. Now, nah, let me stop. I don't want to make this racist. Part of me. I mean, it's still the black power in me. Part of me. Part of me. Part of me. Because this ain't about racism. I'm so sorry. I didn't want to do that. You know, the old person that... <laughs> the Harlem, 125th Street. Yeah, I did a lot of work out there. I'll explain that to you a little later. This is not, this is not that show today. I apologize. I just be seeing certain people that be trying to hold us back. So you just make me proud. Pardon me. Okay, so 45 plus 45 <clears throat> equals 90 degrees. And 90 degrees plus 90 degrees equals 180 degrees. <clears throat> perfect, 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 perfect. <laughs> We're looking good. We're looking good. So all triangles are made up of 180 degrees. <clears throat> Oh, okay, forgot to ask you. So, let's just see 
if you really with it. What's another word for anger? <clears throat> What's another word for anger? Vertex. Vertex. When two sides meet. <laughs> Man, you make me want to curse in the most positive <laughs> way. I mean, want to say, God dang. I said, dang, y'all. I'm not cursing. And a bunch of vertexes, or more than one vertex, is called what? Vertices. <clears throat> Did she just say vertices? <laughs> How many of y'all babies can say vertices and know what they're talking about? How many of y'all babies can say vertices and know what they're talking about? Get them children on the stream. <clears throat> Get your husband on the stream. Get your wife on the stream. Get your side chick on the stream. On the stream. Get your, uh, I don't want to use no, n no more pariah. Let, let me, see, I got to be cleansed. I got to be cleansed. I have to be cleansed. I'm about to say things that don't need to be said. Let me get back here. <clears throat> Just get share this video. <laughs> share this video, okay? Share it. Learning had to be fun. I've been defiled, and I drank from the wrath of this harlot's cup of fornication. So sometimes the way I celebrate is a bit ratchet. I apologize, baby. But you are pure. You're a child of light. <laughs> You're a child of light. So we're going to celebrate positively over kale apple ginger juice with ginger shots topped with cayenne pepper that's what we're gonna do right good stuff so a bunch of those are called vertices right yeah <clears throat> very proud of you all right she's a beast she, i told you she's a beast she's in there she's a beast she's a beast you beating up this information man this is real this is so real all right so you've earned the right to access the energy that I'm talking about. We got to get to that part of this information because she earned it. Did she earn it or not, family? She earned that energy. She earned the right. All we do is learn all day and have fun. We got to have fun when we do this now. You got to have fun. The learning experience cannot be horrid. It can't be stark. It can't be scary. And we're going to explain why. <clears throat> so vertices, vertex, okay. So here we go. Now, we're getting closer and closer to where we got to go. We're getting very close. Hmm. So, we know the triangle. And, of course, we got some stuff we got to work on. We got to work on the scalene triangle. Sometimes we identify a triangle based on its sides. Sometimes we identify a triangle based on its angles. So, if the angles all don't match, they're scalene. If two of the, if, pardon me, if none of the sides match, it's called scaling. If two of the sides match, this means equal. So if two sides are equal, <coughs> then it's an isosceles triangle. If no sides match, it's scaling. If all sides match, it's called equilateral. So you have equilateral triangles, scaling triangles, and isosceles triangles, and that's based on their sides. Then if it's based on angles, you have the right triangle because it's 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. So none of the other degrees are going to be higher than 90 because we know by default the right triangle, any triangle is 180 degrees. So if you got a 90 degree angle, the other angle is just going to be 45, 45, like you said. Right? Now, if any angle is above 90 degrees, then it's called an obtuse angle. So if we, this is the 90. 90 degree angle so if anything is moving more left that means it's more than 90 degrees so that means that this is going to be an obtuse angle it's going to be obtuse so we're going to identify that based on this angle then if it's inside 90 degrees like this if it's inside 90 degrees then we know it's less than 90 which makes it an acute angle right or you can have an acute pain acute because it makes you close in it's more than 90 degrees so obtuse angle or acute or you got an obtuse triangle acute triangle or a right triangle or you have a scale lean triangle isosceles triangle or equilateral triangle so we will always identify triangles based on their sides or their angles triangles are very important because the energies that's precipitated are rooted in triangles to an extent. And I'm gonna tell you why. That's 
especially when teaching children, I like to start from triangles. Because we know two of those triangles together is going to form a square or an oblong square in the form of rectangle. For this week, she's not supposed to say rectangle. She's only supposed to say oblong square. We got to make sure that no matter what word is thrown at her, she knows what's going on. Because sometimes education is so divisive that they'll never teach you a word throughout the course of your career in school and then one day you wind up in a new class and they're just saying words like you was introduced to it all the other classes it's very divisive the way they educate so we are gonna get it out the way we're gonna find out if it's an angle it's also called the vertex if it's a rectangle it's also called the oblong square <clears throat> okay we're gonna learn oh there's equilateral triangles there's isosceles triangles there's scalene triangles we gotta identify them by the size or we're gonna identify them by the angles. We're gonna say this is a right triangle or a acute triangle or a obtuse triangle. Okay, we're gonna know if it's going back here, it's obtuse. We're gonna know if it's right here and we just touching our toes. You know, we're gonna know if it's perpendicular and it looks like an L. The perpendicular, you got that right. If it's perpendicular, we know that's 90 degrees. We're gonna make sure no matter what a person says, we can understand them on every level. We gonna understand that words are the GPS to which in people know how to navigate through the course of our deliberation, our conversation. We gotta make sure, no matter what you said, people always complain to daddy about the words he used. It's cause daddy reads a lot and daddy don't wanna be confused when other people are having conversations who have a different type of access to educational tools and resources than I had. So daddy gotta be nosy and read as much as he can so I'm never left out of conversation because some of those conversations are very important to the survival of our race. I don't wanna be left out of conversation simply because the words got me drugged up on ignorance because I don't know what they are talking about. So when people say, yo, stop talking over people's heads. Understand family, I use the same words to my child. The second my children can talk, <clears throat> they gotta learn. Uh, while you was goo goo gaga, I had them googling Lady Gaga. Now let me stop. That made no sense. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> oh man. Never mind. That made no sense. Well, actually, Lady Gaga has synesthesia, one of your words. What? There you go. So one of, whenever we get a new word, we got a Millie Rock. See? I knew it was going to make sense. Yeah, so we was googling Lady Gaga while your child was. Google Gaga because <laughs> Lady Gaga got synesthesia and it proves that words not only have weight but they also have color because there's a so-called disorder where when you use words people see the color of the word or they hear a sound and the sound has a corresponding color this is called synesthesia so I wanted to prove to my daughter that words have energy and energy is vibration. Vibration is mood and mood is color. They're all the same thing. So if you say one, it has the other. All of them are implied. So then I had to let her know that there's a so-called disease that Kanye West has, synesthesia, that Lady Gaga has, and other people have that help them produce very unique music because when they hear sounds, they see colors. When they see colors, they hear sounds. They got people who have instruments that's laid out in colors so they can produce the tones that correspond with them in their mind and their heart. Real stuff. Say the word, synesthesia. Synesthesia. There you go. She can actually spell it better than me. <clears throat> I'm still working it. So, now, here's the question. The triangle is made up of 180 degrees, correct? Is this line equal to the triangle? There you go. So how much is this line? 180 degrees. The line is 180 degrees. Uh, is a semicircle equal to the triangle as well? Yes. The semicircle is how much degrees? 180 degrees. What does semi mean? Or semi? Half. Means half. There you go. That's the prefix, semi or semi, semicircle, half. So, what did we learn in mathematics just now? The line is equal to the triangle, and the triangle is equal to the semicircle because actually, let me do this better. Because that looks like a wave, like D wave. 
nexus to parallel universes. Hit, hit, wink, wink. That's another class. Boom. What we can realize is if we did this, we can understand why this would still be 180. But the weird thing about mathematics <clears throat> is that things look different, but they're actually equal. Very weird. So this is called fraternal twins. You know what twins are, right? Yeah. Well, sometimes twins don't look alike. You know that? Yeah. This is true. They're called fraternal twins. Sometimes we have children that come out boy and girl. They don't look exactly alike. One looks like boy, one looks like girl. Sometimes you have boy and boy and girl and girl, but they don't look alike, but they're born at the same time, even more rare. But those are called fraternal twins. So these are fraternal twins. The semicircle and the triangle, or the triangle and the line, or the line and the semicircle. And guess what? The square and the circle both equal 360 degrees. So guess what? They're fraternal twins too. So welcome to the world of mathematics where things don't have to look alike to be equal. How about that one? So what are we really saying here? On a physical plane, <clears throat> They are not the same physically, objectively, they're not the same, but subjectively, they actually are the same. What can we like in a student? Well, this can be an Asian, this can be the black man, and this can be the white man. And we're all human, right? We're all human. we all humans. But our geometry is a little different, or a lot different, which means our ability to access certain types of information or resources <clears throat> is at some people's disposal more so than others. Sometimes it sets us at an advantage, sometimes it sets us at a disadvantage. So yes, we all bleed blood, but our geometry is different, which the blood will now precipitate and show and prove in the real world. Why? We can be the same and so different at the same time. This is sacred geometry. And we're talking about the geometry of the races. But in order to do that, we're going to have to talk about how we was created in the first place. And I actually got enough time to take us there. How about that? It could take you how you was born. <clears throat> Very deep. But the whole reason we want to know this is because we got to find out how to access the energy because this stuff is measured in degrees. And if it's measured in degrees, we know degrees is synonymous with energy. So hold up, the whole time we was looking at energy, like you're looking at energy right now, you don't realize if you stared at a shape long enough, you were daydreaming, or you were falling asleep, or you were not off. They don't even tell you that. If you stared at a shape long enough, particularly the shapes just before the plutonic solids, and by plutonic solids, we're talking about the real heavy three-dimensional shapes. We're talking about the tetrahedron, the hexahedron, the decahedron, uh, the dodecahedron, pardon me, the icosahedron, okay, we talking about those shapes right there, tetrahedron, hexahedron, icosahedron, dodecahedron, you feel me, this is what we talking about, there's five plutonic solids, and then you also got to consider the sphere, which is the precursor to it, okay, the sphere is very important, <clears throat> octahedron as well. So you got the tetrahedron, the hexahedron, the octahedron, the icosahedron, and the dodecahedron, and the precursor to all of them being the sphere. What the heck am I talking about? Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it really doesn't. Because, because we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Don't worry about it. But if you were to envision those shapes when you think you can store energy or release energy. And then you can become the alternating current in the room. My family always saying, yo, why are you so warm all the time? But you're not hot. I know that sounds so weird. But they were like, yo, he's always warm. Like sometimes he's hot. Facts. Yeah. And how you remember all that information? Like, my wife will see me read something for the first time. And then go go ahead and teach it for two hours like this. Yeah. And she'd be like, yo, I was just dead when he was excited when he just read it. <laughs> and this dude just taught it like he'd been studying this stuff for years. 
I don't make this up. All you got to do is just look at stream after stream after stream and stream and then say, man, when is it going to run out? People will be like, yo, I'm getting prepared for this lecture. I've been studying for two, three months. And they gas out after 10 minutes. I'm like, yo, come on, McGregor. You can do better than that. <clears throat> so, energy. It's kind of cool. Something's going, tones. Not exactly the tones I wanted, you know. I guess we can Millie Rock to the, to the bell ring. But we'll figure it out. So, the square and the circle are fraternal twins. And we just learned that a line is equal to a triangle and a triangle is equal to a semicircle. And guess what? Nobody really took the time out to say it that way to us. Okay, in there lies the truth. A line is equal to a triangle. Picture in someone telling you this line is equal to a triangle. Which one you wanna use? Because they're the same thing. How you wanna build your universe? You wanna build it with lines, triangles, or semicircles. Because either way, you got exactly what you need to build everything from that point forward. How about that one? Because that line can become a semicircle at any given point, which could become a full circle, and that triangle can become a square at any point, which is a circle, especially when it starts rotating. You can't tell that square it ain't a circle when it starts rotating. But that doesn't make sense to people. You don't have to rotate it, they the same thing anyway, because square is a circle. But you just caught on the surface meaning of these things, and that's what's throwing you off. So what we understand is this. If I weigh 150 pounds, pure muscle for the most part, and then somebody else weighed 150 pounds, but they ain't have much muscle mass. You know, the person with the muscle mass probably looks very skinny in their clothes. Like, I posted a picture of myself on Instagram. People's like, damn, I didn't know you were so cut up. And like, yeah, you know, I do isometrics and all that. Yeah, and breathing exercises. Like, breathing exercises, man, cut it out. You lifting weights. Like, no, it's breathing exercises and isometrics. Whole nother conversation. But the point being is, when you toned up muscle-wise, you can look real skinny out there. Until the person takes their clothes off and start flexing, and you'd be like, yo, dang, you can see it in their legs and everything. So 150 in muscle mass, 150 pounds muscle mass, and someone that's not that fit at 150 pounds, they actually look two different ways. And then we gotta factor in their BMI, their body mass index. Let's not go into all that, I don't wanna talk too much. Let's do it like this. You gotta have somebody that weighs 150 pounds, that is 5'5". Five five. You have somebody that weighs 150 pounds that's 5'8". They both weigh the same amount of pounds, but we know something's different about them. It's the same thing going on here. So the person who's made up of more muscle mass may be able to do different things with their body than the person who has less muscle mass at the same exact weight. Is this fair? So the same thing is going on with these shapes. Yes, they're equal to each other in potential, but their ability to access that potential is where the contrast is. And so their ability to access their potential gives them the image that you see in the physical world. It's a representation of the limitations or where they excel at. This is a representation of energy flowing <clears throat> where the limits are or how broad it is that's all that is walk with me <clears throat> so now we then say to ourselves hold this for me baby so now we start thinking and we say to ourselves okay the geometry of the races and how do we evolve in the first place or how did we incarnate in the first place this is dope super dope so now we say in ancient Egypt they taught that the heart which is the word Ib in, in Kemetic science the word Ib the word Ib is the word heart and the heart is weighed on the scale. Wow, so you got this thing here, right? And so, you got this heart here. You got this feather here. <clears throat> 
So the ancestors said, yo, listen. In the hall of my eye, that's what they call it. Which means justice, order, law, balancement. <clears throat> okay? Justice, law, order, balancement. So they said, when you die, and they didn't say the word die. I have to do die in quotation marks. Because that means somebody said it. They ain't say it. Well, walk with me. The concept is when you die, your heart gets weighed against the feather. <clears throat> but what they were saying is, when you come into consciousness, this could be when you die or when you live. Huh? Well, you do know the word for ancestor in Merunetja means someone who is old, who's about to cross over to the other side, or someone who has crossed over to the other side. So in our language, in sacred tone, ancestor can be someone that's dead or alive. How about that one? Ancestor can mean someone that's dead or alive. How about that? Now, <clears throat> the description of life after death, and watch this, or death after life because we learn as above, so below from religion, but in ancient science, we learn as below, so above because it is the micro world that gives the decree for the macro world. So it's as below, so above. That which you can't see is manipulating all of this right now. It's playing games. It's making the shapes equal to each other when they don't look alike. I know this is all wild and you're walking with me, so keep holding my hand. It's about to get deep. I promise you this. The heart weighed against the feather when there is no life. <clears throat> but they ain't say no consciousness so what is it that we got to figure out if we're now going to remove ourselves from the concept of life and death for a moment what are they saying to initiate either one of the two or to be right between the through line between either one of the two this is before the acceptance of death and before the acceptance of life actually this is right there the heart is weighed on a feather, against a feather. So what the heart mean? The heart is a magnet. Why? Because it's pumping blood. Why? And the blood is full of iron. What does that mean? Well, the planet Earth has an iron core. And it's constantly spinning 1,037 miles per hour. And our center of gravity is making sure we don't fly off the planet Earth. So if the planet Earth is spinning 1,035 miles per hour. And its core is made up of iron, liquid iron. Then that means it's creating a magnetic field around itself due to the circumambulation of the iron. Anytime iron circumambulates, it creates a magnetic field. So the planet Earth has a magnetosphere. Aside from the Van Allen's belt. That protects it from in things coming in, but also it stops things from going out. Unless it's conscious, unless it's frequency, you ain't coming out of here. So the ancestors called this <clears throat> the Dua. They call this. They call this the Dua. This means Dua. It also can be pronounced Seba, but in this particular model, it's Dua. This is a T, At, and this came, this is a uh, determinative, or it can also have a phonetic sound, but in this particular case, a determinative that just means a bold <coughs> or realm or house. So the Dua, the underworld, is what it's been translated to. Just before this stage here, this stage here, we're now dealing with the Dua. But the ancestors saw the duat as that magnetosphere and interpreted this realm here based on context, probably what you would call hell. <clears throat> and they're like, we got to be prepared to escape this. This is hell if you can't get out. It's a good look if you know how to get out. But if you don't got the knowledge of how to get out, which is only through consciousness, which is why they came up with what this is called. 
Let me get that eraser. No problem. <clears throat> this is why they came up with this. There you go. They came up with the hair. Let. You know, these are like two legs walking. Pair that. M, the owl. <clears throat> then you have <clears throat> sometimes you might have that there. That means plural. Or ooh sound. <coughs> that has a ooh at the end of the word. Then that means multiple things. So, well, we'll stick with this. They call it the parrot. M Haru. And this per, pronounced per, also means house or abode. And this is a R, which is a phonetic equivalent because this is a letter PR. So this is just letting you know the last letter of this letter is R. So this per, that, this is a T. These legs, whenever you see legs in the Meru Neture, which means sacred writings, whenever you see legs, depending on where it's facing, it's either going or coming. So the legs, depending on where the legs are facing, either going or coming. And then you have the owl, which is M. M means into or forth. And then this right here is her or heru. Her or har. And then this is ra, meaning the sun. But they're telling you, think of the actual sun. Very important. They're saying, think of the actual sun when you see this. So when they say pere em heru, which has been translated as the book of the dead, peret. In Kemetic science or language or the metal nature means ritual possession. It means a group of people conducting the ritual. The Book of the Dead is a book about becoming Usir, who they call Osiris. And Usir means to awaken. So the Book of the Dead, one of the most important eschatological and cosmogonical corpus of all time on planet Earth, especially when it comes to the ancient Egyptians, the Remetu, those that's the right word, the Remetu. Think about this. <clears throat> the most, one of the most important books called the Book of the Dead is not called the Book of the Dead. It's called the Pere M. Heru, which means the ritual procession into being woke or the awakening. Y'all thought y'all came up with that term being woke? Don't you know the Book of the Dead is all about being woke? Because the goal of the Book of the Dead is to become and Usir, to become Osiris. And Usir means to awaken or to become woke. The goal of the Book of the Dead is to become woke. When you die, the goal was to make sure you're conscious. But the consciousness can't take place by yourself. That's why it's a ritual procession that we all make, that we all got to go into. So a group of us as a collective have to be conscious. So every time a group of people die, collectively their consciousness has to go into an awakening. You accept it or you don't, is your fate. But even if you wanna be woke, you have to have the tools, the knowledge to know how and have put in the work on this plane to do so. You have to have some awareness of where to travel and where to go. They actually left a blueprint for how to travel in your consciousness. <clears throat> it's all over the eschatological and cosmogonical corpus of the ancient Egyptians. You all should get you an Amduat. You all should get you a Book of Gates. You should all get you a Deep and Recension. You should all get you a Pere Emeru that they call the Book of the Dead. Because <clears throat> they wasn't spooking out. They're telling you specific places to go. They had no telescopes, according to the white folks, eh? They had no microscopes. So how they got all those constellations correct? <clears throat> Who knows? But this is Pere. This means abode, paret, which means ritual procession. Those legs means to go into or come forth. M means in or forth, pardon me. So you're going forth into, what's this? Heru. <clears throat> now I said this was important. Why? Because they told you think about the actual sun when you say Heru. Think about the actual sun when you say Heru. 
What does Horus represent in ancient Egypt? What part of the day does he represent? Does he represent the morning sun, noon, the setting sun? What does he represent? Well, think about it. The horizon, Horus rising, right? Horus represents the coming sun of dawn. He represents the sun coming up. What happens when the sun comes up? Because they said, think about the actual sun when you say heaven. Think about the actual sun when you think about dying. What happens when you start waking up? Because the sun is coming up. When the sun comes up, what happens? The plants start coming up. You know, when you party all night, you're like, yo, I just want to get in the crib before the sun come out. Because the sun come out, I ain't going to be able to sleep, man. You know how the sun be. So they said, think about the sun when we talk to you about Horus. And Horus represents the rising sun. And when the sun rise, you rise. You get up. You wake up. The plants get up. Everything starts reaching towards the sun. Think about the actual sun. If this line wasn't here, <clears throat> it'd be metaphorical. If this line wasn't here, it'd be allegory. It'd be anthropomorphosis. It'd be a personification. But when this line is here on the sun, that means think of the actual sun. In metal and that's how they wrote it on the walls think of the sun when you think of the guy who represents the rising sun so what does the rising sun do it wakes you up and what is the book about being awake so a group of people ritual and ritualistic manner going into an awakening not going into the sun but they translated it the book of the dead and if we don't know the language, we just like the book of the dead. I hate when people call it the book of the dead. And on page two of my book of the dead, he tells you it's a mistranslation. And doesn't even give you the right translation. <clears throat> Faulkner has good work. Budge is all right. These are different authors. Polite is the best. <laughs> Hands down. <clears throat> so now we go into the holes of my eye. They say this is when you die, you go to the judgment halls and your heart gets weighed on a feather and skip. But I'm saying the point where there's just consciousness. How about that one? Well, what does the feather represent? Static what? Electricity. And the heart represent magnetism. Don't you know where, whenever there's magnetism, there's electricity. And whenever there's electricity, there's magnetism. They never come by themselves. They always come as a team. Like, yo, why you had to bring your man, though? Because that's how we roll. You see a magnet, you're going to see electricity. You see electricity, you're going to see a magnet. Magnetism and electricity work hand in hand. You're never going to find gold without iron. That's how it works. You're never going to find magnets without some kind of electricity. <clears throat> so magnetism and electricity go hand in hand. So the heart represents magnet, and the feather represents electricity. <clears throat> and guess what? The birth of any universe or anything is precipitates plasma. In order for plasma to be precipitated, you have to have magnetism and you have to have electricity. But consciousness evolves out of magnetism and electricity. So when you were nothing and you had to incarnate into something, the first thing that had to prevail was your consciousness. And that's how you incarnated on this planet Earth. The first thing that is birthed What's the eraser? The first thing that is birthed <clears throat> when you are born is your consciousness. How about that? The first thing that's birthed when you're born is your consciousness. How about that? <clears throat> Lesson time. So, we learn birth of a universe, plasma, plasma, magnetism, electricity heart definitely represents a magnet why would the heart represent a magnet to our ancestors and first of all the ancestors said that the heart means what mind so they might as well say your mind was being weighed against the feather <clears throat> so the magnetism of your mind but hey they said that the word heart means intellect it means mind it means thoughts they said your heart means mind in the metal nature think about that they said that your heart means mind <clears throat> let's do the knowledge baby before you had a brain, <clears throat> you had a heart. Before you had a kidney, you had a heart. Before you had lungs, you had a heart. Because the first thing that was made was your heart. 
So the first thing was made was your consciousness. Hold on, polite. I thought the brain is where we do the thinking. No, this is why the ancestors left the heart inside the human body when you so-called die, because it was still operating. It wasn't pumping no more because the purpose of the heart really isn't for the pumping. So when you die, the heart is still active. He talking crazy now, but do you know what the heart's for? When you incarnated, what's the first thing it did? The first thing your heart did when you incarnated was not pump blood. It was have you manifest in the form of consciousness. What's the first thing that takes place? Hold on. <clears throat> we want to play stupid, don't we? I know somebody out there want to play stupid. So let's do the knowledge. Let's get into sacred geometry. So you were made from this one cell, but it's really a sphere. Like a basketball, how that's shaped, right? You <clears throat> So you made for one cell, which is a sphere. I'm gonna do this real quick. And then you had to implode, not explode. It's an actual word, it means implode. You had to implode, you had to expand inward. And when you expanded inward, you divided into two. In order for you to expand outward, you first had to expand inward. So you imploded into two, bow. New, new net. And then <clears throat> you had to subtly divide again. <clears throat> and you became four. This is interesting because when you connect the points of the four, right? Let me show you what happens. When you connect the points of the four, can we get the eraser? <clears throat> Because we're going to connect the points of what the circles make up. But well, I'm going to just move this along. Pardon. No, no, I got it. When you connect the points of the four, <clears throat> you created a tetrahedron. So, you was a sphere, and the sphere imploded in order to expand broke into two, created what's called a vesica Pisces. That center part right here is called the vesica Pisces. And every division from that point has to divide from the center. So every other circle is gonna keep dividing from the center and it's gonna create a lattice formation, which is a specific pattern. You'll be able to see a pattern. You might even get lost in the pattern. But every time another cell divides or another sphere divides, it's gonna create itself or expand from itself from the same center point and create another vesica Pisces. So the point is always going to be from the vesica Pisces. The common radius of two circles, basically. The vesica Pisces is when two circles share common radius. All right? And so what happens is when it becomes four cells, you've created energy-wise, because masculinity is precipitated by way of that which is linear or straight, and curvatures was considered to be feminine. So men square their actions and actually the sun wouldn't be as masculine as you think in many schools is actually feminine. <clears throat> well, that's a whole nother conversation. So what we're doing now is realizing that when we get four of these circles that are being, the first one being a sphere imploding within itself in order so it can explode out itself to keep expanding. If you connected the points of energy or the dots from the vesica Pisces, you will wind up with what's called a tetrahedron. <clears throat> Why is that important? Because we learned the universe is quantized. What does that mean? That means the universe is made up of quanta. What does that mean? Because it sounds like you're using the same word. Well, if you take a picture and you blow it up as wide as you can, you'll realize it's made up of little squares. No matter how good the resolution, 1087, 1037, whatever, the, the 4K, whatever. Once you stretch that thing out as much as you can, you're going to see little squares. And those squares are called pixels. Well, the universe, come find out, is also made up of pixels, which means this is like a program, a computer program, a simulation. You can look up William Gates Jr., a black mathematician, who will also show you that the universe is made in code, a binary code at that, that we are actually part of a program. And so pixels are to pictures as planks are to the universe. So the universe is also made up of pixel-like structures that make up every other thing. What these pixels are called planks when it's in cosmology or when it comes to ontology which is the study of the universe that's what ontology is so the universe is made up 
of tiny little finite things called <clears throat> tetra. This image right here. <clears throat> and it's this tetra that is precipitated when you're born. And what happens is this will become four, but when it becomes eight, when it becomes eight, when it looks like a dandelion, when it becomes, well, really seven, <clears throat> then what you're dealing with is what? Let me get that. When these circles accumulate, you get what's called, what they call the seed of life. You go through another phase of circles, go through this, this next phase of circles, you get the flower of life. This is very important information. We'll talk about it. But right now, the goal is to now let you know you wind up with this. I draw it fast, so pardon me. Okay? <clears throat> You're gonna wind up. You're gonna wind up. Wind up with this thing right here, which is a seven star. Hold on. Gonna wind up with this seven star tetrahedra. Seven star tetrahedra. And the reason why this is so important, <clears throat> part in the chicken scratch for the moment. You're gonna wind up with the seven star tetrahedron. Let me draw this again better. I tried my best to rush it. <clears throat> Go ahead, baby. We're gonna wind up with a seven star tetrahedron. wind up with a seven star tetrahedra and this seven star tetrahedra is going to be very important the seven star tetrahedra is going to be very important because once it becomes seven star tetrahedra you're now made up of those eight different cells because two became four four became eight that's the Agdoa. That is the Nunu Net He Had Keki Keta Muna Munet. This is where the universe started. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was out form and void and darkness upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of God moved across the waters. That's a translation for Nunu Net He Had Keki Keta Muna Munet because those words literally mean void and darkness and face of the deep abyss, water. That, that's a whole nother explanation, but I'm just letting you know that those words is a translation out of them saying that male and females kept being produced, masculine and female energy, straight lines and circles, straight lines and circles, straight lines and circles, lattice formations being created. That's all that means. Well, this is sacred geometry, but the universe is made up of a culmination of this energy. And what makes this energy so significant, because it's a plutonic solid, is the precursor to a platonic solid is the sphere, the next one being the tetrahedron. And what makes the tetrahedron so significant where the universe is made up of tetra, singular, singular, which is quanta, which is why the universe is quantized, because we realize that it's made up of a bunch of finite energies called tetra, measured in planks, which would be equal to, in Photoshop, pixels. So we're made up of a form of pixelation, universe-wise, through tetra, energy. And this tetra is a very unique shape because you can take the mid angles of the tetra and bend them towards their sides and make one within itself over and over to create the same energy over and over and over. It's like a vast supply of energy over and over and over you can create. And then we gotta say, then what can we use the tetra for? We're gonna get to that. Then after the tetra, then you're gonna wind up with the other plutonic solids like the hexahedron, the octahedron, the icosahedron, the dodecahedron, very interesting. And then, why is that important? Because you're talking about earth, wind, water, the tetra is fire. Earth, wind, water, fire. What's after earth, wind, water, and fire? 
ether. So the I, the dodecahedron, which is what the planet Earth looks like from the aerial view down, they don't give you the knowledge on that. I know people want to say the Earth is flat. Knock yourself out. I don't have a problem with it at all. <clears throat> it's a holographic universe. <laughs> Produce whatever hologram you got in your head. But dodecahedron, if you look at the DNA, because the Earth is the DNA of the universe, we're going to figure it out another day. So if you look at the DNA from an aerial view down, it also forms a dodecahedron, which corresponds with ether. We got to get back to the heart and how the heart was created. <clears throat> so this heart has this inception when you're born from a single cell to two cells to four cells becoming a tetra. And the tetra takes the mid side, the mid angles and folds to each side to produce another tetra. And when this happens, a lattice formation precipitates and creates what's called a torso. And you wind up creating a torso donut, which is the only shape that could fold within itself from a culmination of tetrahedrons that fold it from the mid angles to its side over and over again from within itself. It's the only platonic solid that can do it perfectly symmetry, or symmetrically. All the other platonic solids can do it, but they can't do it symmetrically perfect like the tetrahedron. This is how your heart starts being produced because the first organ that's created when you're born is your heart. And guess what? <clears throat> the heart is made up of how much neurons? 40,000 plus. No, neurons are the thing that we associate with the brain. So before you had a brain, you had neurons because at the toroidal divide or the center point of this toroidal energy, toroidal, 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 watch this, T O R O D I A L, okay? Your heart is a toroidal mechanism because after all those tetrahedra culminated and formed the toroidal mechanism called the toro, torso donut, then in the center of that energy, your first organ, your first organ was produced. Okay, the first organ produced inside of that toroidal energy was the heart, and this heart was only made up of thousands of neurons which means when you incarnated on this planet the first thing you came as was consciousness by way of the electromagnetic energies that precipitated you via plasma thanks to the constituent energy of the tetrahedra hold on so polite if the heart is made up of over 40,000 neurons. Are you saying the heart has attributes like the brain? I'm saying your heart is a brain. Your heart is a brain. Yeah, your heart is a brain. Look it up. Memory is stored in your heart. I know you're gonna say, man, that's bullshit. I never heard of that before. Oh, shoot. Why didn't you teach us this? You learned about the heart in school, never learned memory was stored in the heart. Look it up. You'll find out memories in the heart and the heart also produces hormones. What's one of them? Cortisol. What happens when you produce cortisol? What happens, baby, when you produce cortisol? What is cortisol? What happens? You get nervous. You get nervous. And it makes it hard to do what? You can't. You stop thinking. Stop thinking. That happens in the heart, you know. <clears throat> because you lose your coherency. That's why we call it coherent heart breathing. The harder produce cortisol when you get nervous. That's why you can have a heart attack, or you just go blank when it comes to thinking. Or you forget things. So if you take care of your heart, you have a better memory. How about that one? What's the image you should focus on when meditating or storing words in order to develop your memory? The tetrahedron. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, when you learn new things and you put those ideas inside of that shape in your head, I guarantee you for some reason you're always able to access it practice it this information you're learning now put it inside of a tetrahedron every time you get a new idea you're like oh i'm done with that idea throw it in a tetrahedron just envision the idea in a tetrahedron <clears throat> it's the shape of memory memory is stored in the heart i'm not making this up look it up 
Your heart is made up of over 40,000 neurons. Your heart dictates to the brain what to do. Because your heart, they are going to say, no, nah, the heart don't do that. <clears throat> Just because, first of all, your heart is connected to the brain by way of what's called the vagus nervous system. Second of all, your heart is 100 times more electric than the brain. Third of all, your heart is 5,000 times more magnetic than the brain. Your brain is getting orders from the thing that's 5,000 times more magnetic than it and 100 times more electric than it that's also connected to it by way of the vagus nervous system. Don't let people lie to you. So are you brain conscious or heart conscious? Because the heart deals with unity. One, the brain has two spheres. So it deals with duality, confusion. You thinking from a dualistic manner when you have unity in the heart. So you don't know if you want to yell, curse, scream, happy, sad, cry. Because you got options between the left and the right. But the heart deals with unity when it comes to consciousness. Unifies those things and delegates the responsibility for you to go left brain or right brain. But you're brain conscious. You're not heart conscious. You're brain conscious. You're not heart conscious. This whole thing started out with us drawing triangles and lines. Say word. Word. This whole thing started out from drawing lines and triangles. Your daddy's a bad man. I'm a bad man pajama. I don't know how to say other words. Other words, curse words. I'm a bad man pajama. <clears throat> Let me explain something to you. Your heart is where your thoughts are. That's why your ancestors said your heart means, in our language, intellect or mind. Because it's made up of 40,000 neurons. It's made from 40,000 neurons. It produces hormones and it stores memory. And guess what? You ain't gotta just rely on Brother Polite for this information. <laughs> you can look it up and then ask yourself, why did they leave this out of the biology class? So we just did biology and geometry, but in a whole different way that's so fly. Why wouldn't you want your children to get this information? And how can an adult not be part of this information? So now we're gonna do some coherent heart breathing to strengthen our heart, but we also wanna build what's called Sahem. And Sahem is life force energy. Some may call it prana, some may call it ki, some may call it ki gong, some may call it chi. But we wanna speak in the language that corresponds to our DNA so we can be more activated in real time. And we want to use tones that our DNA remembers. Oh man, this, I know what he said, Sachem, everybody, start getting ready. You know what that means. It's a fact. <clears throat> if someone called me Michael, and like my grandmother called me Mickey. Mickey? Because that's what they call my father, it was Michael as well. I'm gonna have a whole different energy. Someone called me Cavity, it's probably time to bang. You brother polite, getting ready to educate. You probably gonna ask me. Yo, I always want to ask you this question. He don't give a heck if I'm in the movies with my family. He don't care. I'm in the middle of a celebrity ball game. I got the ball. Yo, so you brother polite? Yeah. We on the court playing ball. Yo, so I had three questions I always wanted to ask you. <laughs> you, know what I'm so, you know, so it's different responses. So someone starts yawning. Guess what happens? Say word to someone yawn. You don't start yawning. Watch this. I pass it down. Take one, pass it down. <laughs> I guarantee you somebody in that stream is yawning right now. That's what happens. So all you got to do is hear a certain sound like, and then your body starts, yeah, you know, that stuff was kind of deep. I need to get some rest. You know, so tones. So if you hear a tone, whether you remember it or not, your DNA remembers it. Your heart remembers it. Because you incarnated with memory from your previous ancestry. Because the memory was stored in tetrahedron. I know this is just weird and different. But the beauty about what I be saying, I be giving you reference points. Hey, look this up. I just connect dots for you. That's all I do. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the author of any of this. I'm not taking credit for none of this. Daddy just read and connect dots. That's what I do. I'm good at connecting dots. That's all I do. I ain't take, I'm not taking the credit for nothing new. I'm taking no credit. I just want to teach and share information, and I need some time off. Because 
with all the pro-black kill this one, kill that one, the white man's constantly trying to attack you, this, that, and the third. Where's the energy principle? Where, when do we heal each other? Okay, we special, we fly, we smart, we built the pyramids, right? So we them same people, why we ain't coming up with the technological advancements? We are the technological advancement on planet Earth and we not accepting our rightful role. We playing day game. Like I said, I only wanted fun so I could have the free time to indulge in the sciences. Whereby I could culminate the type of energies and consciousness to empower myself and my people. I'm not interested in all that stuff. All this stuff is marketing. All of that was marketing. And if you say, man, all of a sudden he's down with metaphysics now, the right form of metaphysics. All my first 40 books was metaphysics. I ain't never forget that. My first 40 books were metaphysically inclined. <clears throat> so this is not nothing new. Been in, be been in beast mode, but I got to diversify my portfolio so no man or woman is left behind. But right now I realize greater than any other gift that I have is the love that I have for my children. <clears throat> and the energy, the impetus for my, my teaching greatly comes from them because then I have to put more effort into explaining this information, which makes it better for adults when packaged. Because this is our conversation all day. Oh, we're going to do math? We're going to do math about using your consciousness to manifest your goals. We're going to do the knowledge? You know your ancestors used their consciousness to manifest their goals, right? You want to do science? Let's get into the sciences so we can use our consciousness to manifest our goals. You know, all is mental. All is I am, all can, I can, all does, I do. I can succeed as part of all and fail as an individual. <clears throat> I'm a part of all and all. I'm a part of love and all is part of me. I'm in the love of all, and all is in me. <clears throat> we gotta have all those affirmations intact. All those affirmations intact. Say your affirmation, baby. I'm using my consciousness to manifest my goals. Tiny, one more time, come on. I am using my consciousness to manifest my goals. That's what it's about. So everything we learn is only for the purposes of being able to fortify our minds enhance this experience so we can take advantage of the relentless, endless, infinite supply of energy that exists so we can help others who can't help themselves and so we can empower ourselves with the ability to put things into existence that wasn't here, materialize our conceptions. And like I told her, people will tell you, don't worry, you can do anything you put your mind to and don't give you the tools. But picture me telling don't worry, you can do anything you put your mind to. Okay, make a card in. You need the tools and you need the knowledge. You need to know something. That's, you know, that's kind of, that's an overrated statement that makes people say, man, that kind of stuff is bull crap. I thought I could do anything. I've been a loser for 15 years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want to just tell people they could do anything they put their mind to. What I want to tell you is, if you get in tune with the universe and you become brain no, oh, pardon me. You become heart conscious, not brain conscious, and you get down with unity, not duality. You deal with the unity of the heart as opposed to duality of the brain, and you make sure that your brain decrees, pardon me, your heart decrees to the brain that what must be done in order for it, in order for you to manifest your goals. Now you're on the right path. Now you can do whatever you conceive in your mind's eye. So we have to coherently heart breathe. <clears throat> Coherent heart breathing. Make sure every child, for these streams, make sure every child, have your children watch these streams. Make sure every child gets this graph paper. Some magic is gonna take place on this graph paper, family. Absolute magic. Get them some graph paper. Get them a protractor. Get them a ruler. Everyone should have this in their house. And using it. Using it over and over and over. Everyone should be using this for us to be conscious. <clears throat> so the true conscious community is not the ones walking around here so-called living. The true conscious community are actually not here in the physical form, working towards being woke. Everything that you be saying here, they got you, they tricking you out. <clears throat> they actually think, yo, I'm woke. No, you're not woke until you so-called die. And you don't die until you so-called live. You don't have near-death experiences. You have near-life experiences. When you have a near-life experience, you start trying to utilize a little 3% of death uh, of life that you got now. <clears throat> because over about 97% of your DNA doesn't even get activated until you die. So that means you don't live until you die and you're only experiencing 3% of your life right now. <clears throat> Facts, just rewind it, catch that. 
you're only experiencing 3% of your life right now. The other 97% of you is dead until you die. Then 97% of you is alive. And hopefully you can take the little 3% that you're not and be a hundred. That's what we talk about, being a hundred, right? And we talk about being woke, right? We talk about conscious community. The conscious community is the ritual procession that we all make in a form of conscious entities towards our awakening. We do it together as a collective. That's the conscious community. This ain't no conscious community. Do we look like we acting conscious or aware? If we, how are you gonna be aware of this information and still acting a fool? How are you gonna be aware of this information and don't have the, the zeal to study? This is classic. It's classic. This is that real deal. But I don't deal with this information like that on camera all the time because I don't want to disappear. Because <clears throat> people really believe they won't take you out for this information. Just for this type of understanding, you know how much people going to be motivated to want to do real things with their mind? Manifest their goals by way of their consciousness? You can't have what people actually believe that there's nothing to fear when it comes to so-called death. In fact, you're heading towards life. Imagine that. Then no one, no one can trick you into compromising the integrity of your mission in fear of the so-called fact that one day you'll die and there may be nothing here. <laughs> I'm not promising you no heaven. I'm not promising you no hell. I'm not promising you none of that. I'm just telling you it's about being conscious, but first you gotta understand what exactly it means to be conscious and how to facilitate that consciousness. You're gonna have to do some math and science. Our, our ancestors had to do math and science <clears throat> in order to get into what you wanna call heaven or the afterlife. You're not gonna get into the afterlife being an idiot. Hey, I'm sorry, it's just not gonna happen. I'm sorry, you gotta, you gotta carry the one here and there if you wanna get to heaven. And people are like, oh, I guess I'm hellbound. <laughs> Can we at least take a calculator? You are the calculator. So watch this. I'm gonna close out. That phone ain't died yet. This is a miracle. <laughs> we got lights, we didn't have to move. This is dope. I'm in the middle of somewhere. I don't know where I'm at. We is in the woods. I'm like, yo, we gotta go by the trees today because this knowledge is demanding of trees. Because I want them to feel me. I know the streets. They feeling me right now. Like, yo, finally somebody's speaking on our behalf. Real talk. Because the geometry of these trees is nuts. They all into the Fibonacci sequence. The golden mean ratio. The spiral. Everything you see here. Even that thing had looked like a dandelion when I was talking about those eight circles. The seven star tetrahedron. I'm telling you. It's real. This is real. So we got to access the energies in these different shapes in order to manifest our consciousness. So we're going to use those shapes in our meditation to bring what we are looking for in this lifetime. Powerful stuff, baby. Powerful. No one's touching it. Trust me when I tell you, when we start going hard on this, it's a whole nother level. This is the way you was able to speak them four languages when you first was coming up. Because you was on this already. They ain't raising you to be like this. Like... Forget their so-called collegiate level. If they, they take you, you spend money to go to university and don't learn nothing about the universe. They don't even give you the word ontology in the midst of that education. You got a student loan though, but you went to a university and they taught you nothing about the universe. Facts. Facts. But we won't play games with this knowledge. It's all good. So how are we gonna do this? Man, I gotta close out. But how are we gonna do this? Is first of all, we're gonna do our affirmation. Kalana Ashut. Give it to me, baby. I'm using my consciousness to manifest my goals. So we just touching the parts of our body <clears throat> that has been undermined and overlooked because we know our heart and our brain is connected to each other. But we know we want to visualize the heart telling the brain what to do. We don't want the brain controlling everything no more. We see what it's done to society. We're heart conscious now, not brain conscious. So we just do this, just to envision the relationship by way of the vagus nervous system that connects the heart with the brain. And now that we understand memories are stored in the heart, you know you traumatize a child and the heart beats based on that trauma. Every time you go through trauma for the rest of your life, it will beat at that same algorithm and make you respond like the three-year-old that went through trauma, make you respond like the 10-year-old that went through trauma, make you respond like the 15-year-old that went through that unique trauma. And every time you encounter that type of anxiety, your heart would beat just like it did in a form of memory to produce the same type of hormones to destroy you inside out. You gotta control your heart. Through that, you control your memories. Reason why you don't remember your dreams because you're too stressed out. 
when you do coherent heart breathing, your dreams are gonna become more lucid and you're gonna remember everything that took place. These are facts. I wanna tell you, you did a wonderful job, baby. Thank I you. love you. You make me so proud. You body class, body, <laughs> body, body. <laughs> we gotta study this tape, go back, do the knowledge, do the research, take your notes, and come back and then teach what you learned from there to open up class and then we move forward, we keep expanding. But I need you to body the shapes. I need you to body those shapes. The shapes is important. I need you to go hard with that. You know, so we going I want you massively shaped. Because I need you to be able to create it. When we objectively focus, I need you to be able to feel the shape, feel the energy, hold it, do what you want with it, move it around, put the words in it, take the words out of it. Put your dream house in, put your singing career in, put your dance career in there. I need you to do all of that with those shapes. And know which shape corresponds with which attribute of life that you want to facilitate. And I guarantee you, it will manifest. Let no one tell you otherwise. All you gotta do is know that it's true, put it to the test. If it don't work, say, Daddy, man, they ain't been working. And I'll tell you, I apologize for telling you misinformation. That's all you gotta do, put it to test. Cause you're in a better position than I am. Cause they taught me doubt. I never taught you doubt. Never. Only thing they taught you doubt is the media. I never teach you doubt. You only could get that craziness from other people. I'll never teach you that. And they will wanna lock me up for teaching you this information. Oh, memory is in your heart. That's his homeschool work? Yeah, but I can prove everything I'm saying. I got it for the record. Thousands of hours of teaching you gonna be there for the record, because I tape everything. Because this is where our children should be taught. I'm gonna change the way people educate their children in this world. All these lectures with nothing but adults in there, and not one child over there. And what we really talking about then? It's good to have a few of them, but we don't got enough of them. We got very little of them. In fact, we probably got none of them. But everybody doing this for the youth. Everybody, I'm about saving this youth, yo. Where's the youth stuff? And when you give them the youth activities, it's it's garbage. Oh, we gonna let's let them run wild. That's what we doing. We don't want to drop the knowledge on them. When we do have children activities, so they can eat good food and run and play, and we just conscious like, yeah, look at our children. Man, how dumb you think your children are, man? Give them one of these books, man. Read them with them. Read it with them. Learn with them. I be learning with my daughter. She be, when she get the info, she asks me, so does this mean, I'm like, dang, that's a good idea. That's a good thought. I ain't even think about it. For real, that's a good thought. What do you mean? I ain't think of that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Give them the knowledge so they can play with it. Play with it, let them play with it. <clears throat> let them learn to draw those shapes. In school, we should have mastered every shape that I mentioned during this class. And we should have knew every angle, every degree, and how one turns into the other. We, if I had enough time, I would go through this. Y'all missing out. They, they slaughtered us in that public school system. Every time I do this knowledge, I feel so cheated. I feel like, it's true, I started at 19. I lost 19 years, cause they, I wasn't taught right. I'd be mad every day. I'd be looking at you like, yo, you so lucky. I'm almost jealous sometimes, like, Man, but I'm like, I got to give it to you because it would be wrong to know what I know and not spend the time to give it to you knowing that I wish I had it earlier. The whole reason daddy's a success because I use my mind to manifest my consciousness. I use my consciousness to manifest my goals. Real talk. I'm, I'm doing everything I'm teaching you to do, but you'll do it better because you're a better version of me. You'll make less mistakes, you'll make less errors, you're gonna be stronger than me, smarter than me, you're already smarter than me, you already got the potential, you're already a better version. I just can give you the tools. Once you get the tools, you good money. I'm telling you, like, you're gonna be way better. Every time I hear you say something, when I hear you teach, when I see you go to struggle, some people are like, yo, you be too hard on your daughter. She gotta get a little tension because it's forces in this world gonna be hard on her. I don't yell, I ain't cursing and screaming at her, my voice get a little bit higher. Yo, be easy, watch what I'm doing. Watch me, because when it's over, it's love. When it's over, we gonna go to eat. We ate mad food after class yesterday, right? <laughs> yeah. Wildin'. You know, and we like, yo, we gonna go to arcade or dinner after next time. <laughs> Come on, we get it in the evening, we go out and we celebrate a great class. That's what we do, right or wrong? Yes. Come on, we have fun with this. We know what we doing after this. We gonna celebrate another successful lesson. And this lesson wasn't just on video. I'm teaching before video throughout the day. Yeah. Facts, I'm talking hours. I'm teaching throughout the day, hours. And guess what I do with my daughter? After I teach her, all right, get up here, get on camera. I don't know, I don't wanna make a mistake. Now she out of that. Show us some stuff, look, this is this, this is that, this is this. Trust me, it's in there, I'ma ask you, when I ask you, it's gonna be there. See it in this shape, you got it. I'm looking at her today, she getting better and better. 15%. She getting better and better. 
just learn it today, you know it today, you know it for the rest of your life. I want to hear the, I forgot it because you scared. Get out that fear. You ain't had the fear when you was younger. Now you at an age that introduced fear to you is very convincing. Get it out of here. No such thing. You ain't got nothing to be afraid of. Facts. You got nothing to be afraid of. So for y'all out there, like, yo, you got to remember, I'm also a man. I'm not a woman. Like, this is how I'm going to talk. I'm going to be a little aggressive when there's some, a little adversity. But one thing it is, I love my daughter, and I ain't about, and I understand education. I'm not supposed to scare her. But if she starts getting a little nervous, sometimes I might push her a little so she could break out of it. So what, daddy voice may get a little louder. That shouldn't distract you from what you know. Because guess what? The world ain't going to deal with you like that. The world's going to laugh at you, make fun of you, and try to trick you into, pardon the word, try trick you, attempt to trick you into thinking that you're lesser than yourself. So daddy got to sometimes play the game and push you a little, have you thinking oh, I'm a little upset. I'm never upset with you. I just, if I see you get a little nervous, I can't, oh, 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 baby, no. I can't do that. I gotta, it hurt me to see you nervous, but I got to push you. So you break out of that crap. I got to do that for you. I don't want the world to do that for you. At least you can come out of that and I can still hug you when it's over and you can understand what I'm doing. These wicked people out here, they don't know no better. They're not wicked because they're born wicked. They're wicked because they're lacking knowledge. They don't know no better. So when they're insecure, they like to beat up and tear down on other people because they're insecure. You feel what I'm saying? This is what they do. People who are insecure and don't feel good about themselves, they're always looking to joke on other people and make fun of other people to tear them down and make them question who they are as a person. That's what people do in this world. That's all people do to daddy. Every opportunity they get, they look for a fault in me. And even daddy said, yo, I'm, I'm not without fault. Yo, I make mad mistakes. No matter how much I say that, they still come for me all the time. I'm teaching my daughter. They still got something negative to say all the time. But guess what? I know what it is. They don't know no better. So I don't lose sleep over that. I know what's going on. They don't got the right heart. They don't even have a heart. And, so, and, and watch this. The heart, we almost forgot to do this. The heart, the shape. My battery. The shape of the heart. That's the. This is from electromagnetivity when you contract the heart the right way. When you contract the heart the right way, that's how you form that shape. That's an electromagnetic pulse that's emitted or discharged from your heart when you are able to properly manipulate the contractions of the heart. When, the, when you're able to master how the heart can collapse on itself, it produces what's called the mandible. It produces what's called the mandible. It's called the mandible set. So the actual heart don't look like the heart shape that we learned about. So where did that come from? When you learn how to breathe properly and speak properly and think properly, your heart collapses on itself, causes elasticity in the DNA, thereby enabling it to go through a proper retrogradation where it becomes a phase conjugating mirror and you can refract the light that is within you to the universe and back to use your consciousness to manifest your goals. So when your heart collapses on itself the right way, it creates waves that both add and multiply at the same time. In mathematics, this is called recursion. When waves both add and multiply at the same time, and the shape that it forms is the mandible set. It's facts. All facts. That shape comes from the heart collapsing on itself the right way. And it's love. So when we breathe in, we breathe in the love we're given, and we breathe out the love we give out. Breathe in the love that you get, and breathe out the love that you give. And in turn, your heart will eventually collapse on itself the right way to form what's called the mandible set, which is an electromagnetic pulse that has waves that are recursive that both add and multiply, which tells you that you're en route to a effective retrogradation of the DNA. So you can refract who you are as a light being to and fro to take what you need, which is why they got quantum computers to do what you can already do with your own body. You can go into this dimension and that dimension and take out data that you need at will to build yourself up or to put things here that already 
take place elsewhere in similar universes that are parallel to this one. And I know that sounds wild, and it can, and I don't mind, because I put my work in, I wrote my books, I taught my classes, I retired, so I don't mind sounding crazy. I kept up the charade and did everything I had to do when I'm talking to everybody just on the economics and mild metaphysics. Now I ain't got to deal with the ridicule and the chaos and the BS of jealous people. I teach my children. Now I can just come out. I can tell you all sorts of stuff about parallel universes. You will call me crazy. Doesn't matter. I live good and I live great. I'm eating good. I, I, I'm retired. I'm good. I don't have to play the game with these crazies. With all this pro-black, pro-black, pro-black. What it, come on. Y'all ain't even doing nothing with that. Y'all ain't doing nothing with that. After that, where's the empowerment for me as a person to know how to manifest my goals? What, what do I do? Y'all gonna be in the same space every month, every year, complain about what white folks are doing and we getting killed out here. So when we gonna boss up and get our superhuman powers and eliminate all this craziness? But you hate each other more than you willing to unite. You ain't got enough love in you to unite with your own people. You're too skeptical of them. You're not. Real love is about vulnerability. So to really be in love with your people is to be willing to be bashed, willing to be done wrong. That's vulnerability. And even after it's done to understand the psychosis of our people, that's love, vulnerability. You got to be willing to be vulnerable. And if you're not willing to be vulnerable, you don't know what love is. Love is a verb. It's an action word. It's something that has to be practiced. It's not something that you're just sitting here waiting to get. It's something that you got to give out. And, it, and even if it's hard to give it out to the people that it may concern, you still give it anyway with no expectation of anything back. So you build up what's called your meta. It's real talk. But it's all what people heads. You start talking about love, they want to tell you about who they supposed to hate. Who they need to put their boots on their neck. And y'all so filled with anger. You hate the white man so much, you hate your own people. So much so, yo, we got to take this brother down before we take the white man down. That's what it turns into. You hate him so much, you've convinced yourself, no, you're scared of him. You're scared of him. You've made him something that he's not on planet Earth. Ain't nobody my God, ain't, ain't, ain't nobody over me, ain't nobody over you. We masters of our own destiny. I'm creating the X-Men right now. Y'all join New Covenant, join New Covenant with me. Uh, email me at brotherpolite45 at gmail.com. It's real, <laughs> it's real, it's so real. You know, I'll tell you which books I put the pain in to get you built up, man. Like, this is love, like, you can take it, you can leave it. This is free, I ain't asking for no bread. I'm just doing this on the strength because the information's so dope. If you think you're sitting on some powerful information, you're supposed to just give that for free at times, man. You're supposed to do. Once you set and you got enough money for yourself, give that thing off for free. Feel me? Take some time out and build with your family. That's, that's what I work hard for so I can do this. I don't have to do this. We can have our own session, take care of my own, but that's it. I can't take care of my own like that. Take care of my own is the whole family eat from this pot of knowledge and exchange ideas and share it. I hope y'all feeling this, man, because this is where I'm at. In my heart, in my mind, this is what I really care about. This is what I really do. This is free. <laughs> you know what I'm Replay it. Share it. Give it to people. This might be the thing to wake somebody up. Share this one. I don't, oh, I'm feeling good about this one. Share this one. Share this one with people. Share this one. It's dope, though. I'm with it. I love it. We're going to do a little breathing. So what I want to tell you is you got to. this is where most of your energy is at. I'm mad comfortable. Got my tank top sticking out. No strings in my sweats. I'm chilling. They gonna say, yo, he homeless. He poor now. He ain't got no money. That's why he teaching that information. Yeah, okay. Knock yourself out. We'll be in the ghost right after this class, heading out to dinner or whatever we choose to do. All good. That's just trinkets on planet Earth. That don't mean nothing. That means nothing. That's more marketing tool than it is anything. I like it. I have fun with it. But my mind is way more entertaining than any of these devices that they create. I'm still manifesting and working on this device right here. So... How we gonna do this? Baby girl, give me the affirmation one more time. I'm using my consciousness to manifest my goals. Halana Ashu. Give it to me again. I'm using my consciousness to manifest my goals. Let's put that out there. Let's put that out there. Let's put that out there. Take it from the head. Take it from the head. Take it from the head. Put it out there. Put it out there in the universe. Because you know when you throw the rock in the water, mm -hmm. from the point of impact, the waves come out. And if you watch, the waves come right back to the point of impact. So that's how our thoughts are. We put our thoughts out there. It's going to impact the universe. The universe is mental. It's going to connect with our mind. Because the first thing that was built when we came to this plane was our mind. And the physical manifestation of that was our heart. So we know whatever we think is going to register in the universe. And from that source of impact, 
where this all got initiated from, it's gonna come back. And depending on how serious we are about getting a response, it's gonna come back in real time. If you're serious about anything that you say you want, you put it out there, it will come back in real time. And it'll come back right on time. All you need to do is just do the work in the meantime. So long as you work it, your heart is beating to the work ethic of what you say you're serious about. So the universe knows you're real because your heart will be beating towards the work ethic. Whatever you say that you're serious about, you're gonna read to get to that. You're gonna study to get to that. You're gonna put in energy to get to that. And your heart's beat is gonna confirm to the universe, you serious, give that to that girl. She working so hard towards this goal. That's how you help it manifest. So you gotta put in physical work and labor. It's part of the game. But the first part is to think it and see it and feel it and taste it. When we objectively meditate, we see the apple, we feel the apple, we know how heavy the apple is. To the point when we objectify during our meditation, we can taste that apple. We know the color of this apple. The enzymes start secreting out of my mouth. I can taste this apple. I gotta open my eyes and say, I'm about to digest this apple. Facts. Then we subjectify it. We do subjective meditation. Now we deal with the sensations, but we don't deal with the energy of seeing the actual object. Now we just deal with the sensation. That's meditation. When we pray, they're like, who you pray to? We just communicate with the universe. All is mental. We part of the same mind. Don't think just because I got a body here that I'm not part of all, because I'm going to tell you this. If I have a bottle in my hand, is the space inside the bottle separate and different from the space outside the bottle? Or is the bottle in our way creating an illusion? Is the space inside the bottle separate from the space outside the bottle? Of course not. So, all is mental. Just because I have a body don't mean I'm disconnected from the mind of all. We're all part of the mental reservoir. So if I think a thought, if I think a thought, I'm not really reaching towards something in particular. I'm already part of that which already exists. I'm part of the entity. It's just if it's profound enough, if I'm sincere enough, if there's enough love in it, it'll manifest. And it's always on time. It'll manifest in due time. It will always manifest. You feel me? It's always going to manifest. All you got to do is think it and feel it and see it. So that's why we pray to feel you, which means telepathy. That's where the word comes from, from the Hebrew into the English just means to communicate mind to mind we communicate from our mind to the mind of all after we send that message we wait for the phone to ring through meditation how dare we call the universe the universe pick up and then now we don't meditate so people be praying but they don't meditate and people be meditating and not praying you gotta do both you send the call out and then you wait for the phone to ring and you answer the call so that's what we do in meditation we, we answer the call after we answer the call, then we gotta think about it. Introspection, so we're gonna pray, we're gonna meditate, we're gonna introspect. After that, we're gonna charge up again and we're gonna start the coherent heart breathing. So there's a part of your body right here, just below your navel, you know your navel is, your belly button right there? But right below that, this energy right here, touch it right there, just below your belly button, bow. <clears throat> chakra energy, it's called chakra. Well, people call it chakra, I don't like using that word, but we got a sense of energy right here, right? People call it chakra, so you know what people talking about. Boom. This is there's three major points where this chakra is, where this energy is. Three major. This is where the bulk of the energy is. Free energy. But we gotta build it up. And it's built up by way of our heart and our breathing. Right? So we're gonna build this energy up. We're gonna see white light. When we breathe in, we're gonna see white light coming into our body. And it's going to go down here. We're going to fill this part of our belly up. When we breathe in, open your legs a little. <clears throat> so what we're going to do, we're going to charge it up. We're going to put it all in here. Then we're going to release it through our hands, and we're going to keep charging up until we create this ball of energy that's going to make our hands hot. Your hand is going to get hot. You're going to start sweating, and it's chilly out here. You're going to start sweating. Then we're going to bring it like this. Then we're going to bring it like this. Then we're gonna do it again. We're gonna keep building it up. It's gonna be gradual as we breathe out, breathe in. First, we're gonna build all that energy here. Then we start filling it up. Then we're gonna release it through our hands and we're gonna build up. Then we're gonna do one hand on one side, this hand on this side. We're gonna keep building, we're gonna keep building, keep, keep until we can fill a ball of this Sahem energy. 
this life force energy. Then we're going to decide if we're going to do this to love ourselves or heal each other. Ain't even got to touch nobody. It's not even electricity. This is some other energy. What electricity can't do. We're going to send it. We're going to send the love to our people. We send the love to ourselves. Do certain parts of our body. Part of our body aching. Heal ourselves or heal each other. That's what we do with that. This energy is real. Oh, you're going to take this. You're going to store it right here mentally to put it out to the universe to assist you in your goals. But the first thing we got to do before we take in this light, this white light, and we breathe in. When you breathe in, I want your chest to protrude. This